Russia supplies more than 25% of Europe's hydrocarbon needs. Ever since the natural gas cutoffs in 2006 and 2009, the European countries have been searching for ways to reduce their dependency on Russian oil and gas. In this context, the crisis in Ukraine has sparked a new drive for the search for alternative sources of energy. One project that is of particular interest but underappreciated in the media is the Transcaspian Pipeline and the Southern Corridor. If realized, it would significantly change the energy map of Europe in the long term. Welcome to Caspian Report by me, Shirvan. The Trans-Caspian Pipeline is not a new idea, it was initially proposed in 1996. The Trans-Caspian Project proposes constructing a 300 km underwater pipeline from the Turkmen port town of Turkmenbashi across the Caspian Sea to Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. The main supplier of natural gas for the pipeline would be Turkmenistan. The country produces 77 billion cubic meters of natural gas per year and because of its small population, Ashgabat is able to export the majority of it, roughly 44 billion cubic meters annually. But Turkmenistan's energy infrastructure could at least double this number to somewhere between 80 and 84 billion cubic meters by 2020. And the country would be able to maintain this level of production for a while, Turkmenistan's natural gas reserves are estimated at 17.5 trillion cubic meters. That's more than the proven reserves of the US and Saudi Arabia combined, excluding shale gas reserves. This wealth of energy resources has made Ashgabat much bolder in its foreign policy in comparison to its neighbors. The country has thus far avoided joining the Russian-led Eurasian Union and the Russian military bloc, the CSTO. Officially speaking, Turkmenistan pursues a neutral policy, but in practical terms, the country is landblocked and any existing trade and transport infrastructure goes through the Russian-dominated countries. So this is the biggest issue that Turkmenistan faces. The country doesn't have the required infrastructure to bring its resources to world markets. And even though the country has an enormous wealth of energy resources, the extent to which the country can exploit and export these resources, it depends on Russia. For example, up until 2009, Turkmenistan exported around 87% of its natural gas to Russia, which then re-exported this to Europe at much, much higher prices. Turkmenistan had little to say in the price of export, and in fact, when Ashgabat tried to negotiate for new prices, Russia felt that Turkmenistan was getting too bold. Parallel to these events, the economic crisis of 2008 hit Europe, and the demand for natural gas plummeted. So what happened next was that Russia reduced its imports of Turkmen natural gas from about 40 billion cubic meters per year prior to 2009 to 9.6 billion cubic meters in 2010. The next two years, Turkmenistan's gas exports to Russia remained about the same, at roughly 10 billion cubic meters up until the year 2012. The export of natural gas forms at least 50% of Turkmenistan's government's budget revenues. So obviously the drastic Russian import reduction was a major concern for Turkmenistan, some might even call it a national crisis. So right after 2009, Turkmenistan was forced to shut down many of its natural gas production sites since they weren't able to export it. But more importantly, this was a wake-up call for the Turkmen government and they started to speed up the process of diversifying their energy exporting routes, particularly the Central Asia-China pipeline, which was a long-term export agreement between Turkmenistan and China dating back to 2006. Only after the Russian import reduction did the Chinese Turkmen government speed up the Central Asia-China pipeline project which envisioned Turkmenistan exporting 40 billion cubic meters of gas per year to eastern China. 
in late 2009 the pipeline was inaugurated. For both countries this project was an enormous success. The Turkmen energy resources helped China meet its energy demands and the Chinese prices helped the Turkmen government to stabilize their budget revenues. Inspired by this success, the two countries signed an additional agreement in 2013 for an extra 25 billion cubic meters of natural gas. So according to the new agreement, Turkmenistan will export 65 billion cubic meters per year to China by the year 2020. Obviously, Russia isn't all too pleased with the Chinese investments in Central Asia because it symbolizes the growing Chinese presence in what Russia considers its backyard. But the Chinese too distrust Russia because the Central Asia-China pipeline goes through Kazakhstan, which is part of the Russian-led Eurasian Union. So in practical terms, the level of cooperation between Turkmenistan and China depends on Russia. This is the last thing China needs, being dependent on Russia for gas. So in correlation with this, Turkmenistan and China started the construction of a new pipeline in the month of March. This new pipeline will bypass Kazakhstan and go through Uzbekistan and Tajikistan instead. Interestingly enough, the Chinese government has promised Tajikistan military aid in the amount of hundreds of millions as means to bolster the Tajik security forces to safeguard the new pipeline in this unstable region. This geopolitical pipeline game reflects the conflicting interests of Russia and China in Central Asia. Both countries are suspicious of each other. China needs new sources of energy. Turkmenistan needs a new market to export and Russia needs to maintain its dominant position in the region. But Moscow also understands the needs of Ashgabat and Beijing and doesn't want to directly oppose them as it would only backfire and perhaps even trigger a Chinese-Russian proxy conflict in Central Asia. But the latest crisis in Ukraine has brought forth a new opportunity for Turkmenistan to export to a whole new market, Europe. And this is where the Trans-Caspian pipeline comes back in the picture. This project would allow Turkmenistan to export its energy resources to European markets through the proposed Trans-Anatolian gas pipeline or TANAP for short. This is a Sokar owned pipeline, which in turn is the Azerbaijani state oil company. The TANAP is then connected to the Trans Adriatic pipeline, whose biggest shareholders are BP, Sokar, and Stat Oil. Once the pipeline reaches Italy, it can be then connected to the other EU member states. Altogether, this is known as the Southern Corridor. And it sounds good on paper, but there are a few problems involved. For one, this project requires more sources than Azerbaijan alone. For example, Azerbaijan's gas field, Shah Deniz 1, exports about 4.7 billion cubic meters through the Baku Tbilisi Erzurum pipeline, also known as the BTE. Keep in mind that the Tana project has only began construction in 2014. Now, the second Azerbaijani gas field, Shah Deniz 2, will be operational by 2018. It is expected to add another 10 billion cubic meters to the BTE. This certainly isn't enough for what is described as an alternative source to Russia. But Azerbaijan combined with Turkmenistan and possibly even Iraq and Iran is much, much more viable. So it is no surprise that in the month of April, the Turkmen foreign minister visited Azerbaijan and the president of Sokar visited Turkmenistan, all the while the Azerbaijani president visited Iran. And finally, all the Caspian states held a conference in Moscow to settle the legal disputes over the Caspian Sea's maritime boundaries. Basically, Russia opposes the whole idea of TANAP and the Trans-Caspian Pipeline because it undermines Russia's energy monopoly in Europe. So the Russians will do everything in their power to prevent it from being realized. This includes lowering the price of Russian gas to Europe, like catching flies with honey, and it also includes using military force.
the Russian Navy is by far the largest and most capable fleet in the Caspian Sea. Next, the proposal and participation of Iran in the Southern Corridor requires a political solution to the sanctions on Iran. If successful, Iranian pipelines can be connected to Baku and from there to the TANAP project. The participation of Iraq requires a Turkish-Iraqi-Kurdish compromise in parallel to an American-Iranian agreement. And finally, the participation of Turkmenistan depends on the support from the EU and the US, but it also depends on China. Obviously, the Chinese don't want to see their agreement with the Turkmen government undone for the sake of Europe. So any decision made on the Trans-Caspian pipeline would have to take into account the Chinese interests. Turkmenistan's production levels can reach somewhere between 80 and 84 billion cubic meters. That is not enough to supply both China and Europe at the same time. So in this regard, it is likely that Russia would compromise with the Turkmen gas flowing east to China rather than flowing west to Europe. It is this list of political constraints that undermines the feasibility of the Trans-Caspian project. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. For more information, visit the social media pages in the description section. Thank you for watching and sawol.